getting too caught up in, in um, the, the numbers as they take their, their feet to the start line. Now we'll let them get underway and as they, the gun goes they settle in early. Obviously you've got the split start there with the girls on the outside going all the way around to the 1500 metre start before they break and then making their way into lanes one and two um, with 24 and a half laps left to run. The girls on the inside will be just settling and Melissa Duncan um, the young lady out in front looks like she's going to set the pace. Um, I think there'll be a little bit of that happening in the, the women's 10k and then again later on tonight in the men's 10k. There'll be a little bit of pace and that's just to give the girls some certainty as, to, as around to what's going to happen. Um, rather than have it dawdle for the first 10 laps, we're just going to set a good rhythm. Um, and there's a really good quality field in this race this evening. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out over the next half an hour. It will indeed. And we've got Jen Gregson, who's slotted into second place, but I believe will also be taking on some of the pacemaking responsibilities. And Tomi Nia of Japan is our international guest in this women's Zatapec tent. It's moved into third place. Camille Buscombe from New Zealand, a former champion, into fourth place. And then moving forward, Sinead Diver, obviously off some red-hot marathon form. And we're having to step back onto the track, potentially not where her strength lies, but the strength as a runner is without question at the moment, Craig, that um, the, to what she's been able to do on the marathon on the roads is, is, is quite impressive. Oh, absolutely. And that'll transfer really nicely over 10k um, on the track tonight. She's been in great shape, um, as has Tress Dring Chess Dringo in the marathon, um, raced only a few months ago, or not even a month or so ago in, in Canada over the marathon, is in really good nick. She's just decided to settle a little bit further back in the field tonight, obviously aware that the pace was going to be uh, on, so to speak, um, and it didn't want to be too aggressive too early. But you know, the girls out in front, Mel, setting a very, very strong pace, and this is um, looking nice and smooth. Um, and they'll just be putting their head down, focusing on the back in front of them, uh, and keeping a nice rhythm, watching the feet come up um, in good rhythm, making sure that they're not ex exerting any energy they don't have to um, as they go through, I think, was that six, uh, 600? And Melissa's just checking the watch, making sure that she's on target. But they'll literally be conserving energy. The pace will be comfortable um, for the majority of them at the moment. Um, obviously, you can see it's starting to split into a couple of different packs. Um, and that's, that's not because the pace is what it is. It's because the girls are aware that um, that group out in front are, are going for a particular time and that they may well not be that comfortable at that pace so they're deciding to be a bit more conservative in the first part of the race although as I do say that the field comes back together um, and that second half of the field is just playing, playing the patient game which is nice and they're just going to work their way back into that group and, and settle in. They've still got 23 laps to go uh, and there is a long way to go. And it's not too uncommon in, in the Zatapec where you do see uh, groups break and splinter and the field come back together again. Some will, will surge, some will work more of that, that steady pace and and where we had seen a group of five, it's now really a group of, well, this part of 15 athletes, save for the five that have just dropped off the back in two little groups. So they're running and they've stretched out. It's not closely packed, so they've each got, I guess, the space to be able to, to move and they don't feel uh, in any way boxed in, that they can get into their rhythm, they can settle into their race as we approach or move through the first 1,000 metres. Yeah, absolutely, and as they go through that, they're on 31.40 pace at the moment, which is pretty solid, actually, but you can still, there's a big group up there. They'll be running in lane one. Um, for those that are, are into the numbers, when you go out a lane each lap at seven metres extra, so if you're running in lane two, you're running 407 metres a lap, so you add seven by 25, and that's an extra, whatever it is. My math isn't my strong point, but that's a lot of lap, that's a lot of metres that, uh, that you don't have to run, so hence the reason they're in single file and they will be just minimising the effort that they've got to put in at this point. We're going, we're going to head down to the track. We can see the ladies are really settled into the work, but we're heading down to the pole vault. Nick Wall, you're there. Thanks, Tom. Great timing. Blake is your man on the runway here. They're at 8 metres 10. We've just seen a Tasmanian record in the pole vault, ladies and gentlemen. Get around that. Matt Hosey, 4.90. Blake now over the same height, just a subtle miss. So it's 10 centimetres between our teams right now here in the Steve Hooker Challenge. Felicity and Blake lead at 8 metres 10 there, sorry, in second. Katie and Matt though at 8 metres 20 with a Tasmanian record of 4 metres 90. He just told me he's not a multi venture anymore. He's a pole vaulter. We trap cross back to the 25 laps action on the track. Thanks, Nick. The action is hot down in the field and the track, well, it's just starting to to warm up. It's heating up gradually but that's what we like to do in a 10,000 metre. We don't want to go out too hard too early and it's Melissa Duncan and Jen Gregson that sit at the front of the field, our pacemakers and the athletes you'd expect to be around about the mark. They're our favourites. Uh, Nia of 
Japan diver, the Australian. Pashley is one to watch, wearing the Victorian uniform, and Camille Buscombe, a former winner. And we're starting to see again another group form, uh, another cluster of four behind this leading group of 10 or 12. But Craig, as you said earlier, it's about finding rhythms and, and just being able to stick to your own guns early in this race. Yeah, it's about settling in. It's a battle of attrition and it will be tonight with Melissa and, um, and both Genevieve obviously looking to set a strong pace. Um, Sinead's tucked in nicely um, and they're currently on, well they've slowed a little bit, they're on just over 32 minute uh, 10k pace. So the pace is still pretty strong but you'll see that second group led by Jess Trengove at the moment It's just going to try to work her way up nice and slowly. Calm is key in a 10k, no sudden moves, no aggressive moves. Um, at this point in the race, most certainly anyway, um, and she'll just make her way back onto that front group um, and try and do that over the next four or 500 metres so that she's got some contact, a little bit of cover. It's not a huge benefit from drafting in, in middle distance running, but there is a huge benefit from being relaxed and in contact. So that's what Jess will aim to do over the next lap or so. Um, but yeah, the girls up at the front are certainly settled, settled in as they make their way round that top bend with the, the crowd that's allowed to get out on the track. I really like that. That's a concept that's come in over the last few years and it just gives um, the, the spectators um, the opportunity to come and, and watch the athletes up close. And I know from talking to a lot of spectators that have come in today and some of the, the younger students that we work with, they love coming to the Zatapec because they get that access to the athletes and they get to see them within close proximity, which is fantastic, especially as this race progresses and they get to learn and understand the effort that's required to run a really, really strong, hard 10K. Um, as it looks like we have a move up in front. We do, we have Hitomi Nia of Japan has decided the pace setting is maybe not to her liking and it has moved forward and, and made a surge ahead of Duncan and, and Gregson. And we talk about world-class athletes. Well, Hitomi Nia is just that. She was a fifth place at the World Championships over 10,000 metres back in 2013. Took some time out of the sport and has now come back to it uh, and looks to have not lost much in that time away, looking very composed, looking very relaxed early on and, and working to her rhythm. And obviously, when you have a pacemaker that set things up for you but not quite working for you, you've got to go with what you want to do. You don't you've want to... You've got to play to your strengths, don't you? And I think, you know, the last a couple of weeks ago, she ran 15.24 for 5K, so she's in reasonable nick. Um, and apparently, uh, when she heard the pace for this evening, she thought that was quite entertaining. So she's obviously quite confident that she's... Um, she's going to run away with this one. And the interesting question here for Melissa is, does she maintain the pace she's, she's been instructed to do or does she try to keep her girls in the competition? And um, that'll be something that'll be going through her mind at the moment. She had a look on the back straight um, and then again at the watch, just checking the split. She's on target uh, for the pace that they want to run. But what does she do here with the girls? Does she try to close that gap um, or let Nia head out and run her own race? I guess we'll find out very shortly. But for the, at the moment, it's, it's Duncan and Gregson. Buscombe is third in that, that second group, so fourth overall, but essentially second in the competition as we expect the two pacemakers to drop out. It's very confusing. Diver and Pashley are there as well, as we see Emily Brickacek, another to move forward. Uh, one we've seen on the podium at the Zatapec back in 2011, and uh, that was a race to behold. And we had the two Kenyans out here, uh, Joyce Kitchep, Karu and Emily Kibet. Of course, that was the year the race record was set in this women's 10,000 metres, 31-26-10. Um, we'll keep that in the back of our memory. We're not too sure where we'll end up time-wise this evening, but Nia is moving very comfortably and, and doesn't seem to be too phased by uh, being out alone and in front. No, she'll settle into that rhythm and she's well experienced in this. She's got a strong background in the half marathon as well, so the distance isn't going to be an issue. Um, she's obviously come a long way to race 10k tonight, so she wants to make it count. Um, we've got a change in the lead in that second group with Genevieve Gregson um, taking that up. So Melissa um, and Genevieve are obviously doing their duties there and doing a good job. Um, first K 3.11, second K 3.13, they're coming through um, 3K um, as they come around next time. Uh, pretty even pace, so no question that the girls at the front of that second group are doing a great job. Um, again, it's just whether they decide to try to pick it up uh, and catch Nia, our Japanese um, international athlete. Well, Nia looks quite comfortable at the front of the field, so it's timely as we head back down to the infield to Nick Wall at the pole vault. Oh, thanks, Tom. Good timing. We've got Max Maraschenko here. He's going to do something pretty special. He's going to go about five metres. The bar's at 4.90 now, but those guys are in third place currently. But we have equal leaders in the Steve Hooker Challenge. We've got Felicity Juvelle and Blake Lucas there at 8.20, and they are equal right now with Katie Abfolter, the Victorian local, and Matt Hosey, the new Tasmanian record holder at 4.90. 8.20, 
equal lead is in the pole vault. As Marashenko, unfortunately, we lose him the competition. Two teams to go, Tom. 8.20 is the current leader. Steve Hooker challenge. Thanks, Nick. Back to the track, and we're just starting to get these splits coming through, and we've seen Nia move through. She didn't like the pacemaking, and when we look at the split, Craig, of what she's just dropped in that third 1,000 metres, 3.05, the pace has really quickened for Nia at the front of the field and has set the task for the rest to respond to. It has, but the, that second group led by Genevieve at the moment is still sitting around that 3.10 to 3.12 K pace, so they're doing a great job just maintaining a smooth rhythm, um, obviously keeping in mind that it's that middle core group of athletes that are sitting behind those two are the ones that we're going to be watching in the latter part of these stages, potentially. Um, but Nia has injected quite a bit of pace, but it, that gap isn't really widening from where I'm sitting here at the moment, what I'm seeing on the screen. Um, so I would imagine that Nia has settled back in around that 3.9, 3.10 K pace as well, um, but just injecting a little bit of pace to open up the field and see what they're, what they're prepared to do tonight um, on the track. So for those watching at home, we have the split screen feature, and you can see Nia in the left-hand corner of your screen leading the Satapec 10 women's 10,000 metres. And in the bottom right of your screen, we see the chase group led by Jen Gregson. Melissa Duncan is tucked in behind her. Camille Buscombe, the former winner, is a diver coming off a recent marathon in Melbourne. Ellie Pashley, Emily Brickacek round out that group and tucked on to the back as well. We've got one more. One to keep an eye on in that group. Ali Pashley won the City to Surf earlier this year, has been in great nick. Um, has obviously got the work in the legs, so she's coming here with an expectation to run really, really well. Um, and we can see there's a little bit of movement starting to happen in that second group. The split screen that we've got here in front of us, we've got um, Naya from Japan on the left-hand side, and in that second group, it's a little bit deceiving. It looks like they're a bit closer than they are, but... There's about a 40 metre lead between um, Nia and that second group, but the second group looks for my liking to be closing that gap just a little bit, as we can see a couple of those athletes start to tail off, um, as we can see the front on shot with, uh, with Genevieve and Melissa. They're looking nice and strong. I'd imagine Melissa's gonna come round quite shortly and take her turn, um, her second turn at the front to just keep that, mate, that pace um, rolling along nice and smoothly. Still clicking off those 311, 312K pace, which is, um, which is very, very solid running. And we look at that group that is together. They actually spend a lot of time training in and amongst that Melbourne Track Club uh, group. Gregson and, and Duncan and, and uh, Buscombe as well. Um, divers spending some time with them too. So there's that, a group that I guess are used to running together, used to training together and, and being part of, of the, the same environment. Yeah, absolutely. Most of them will have come down from Falls Creek earlier in the week. They've spent three weeks up there training in the snow, believe it or not. It, um, it does snow up there in December. Um, but I know Sinead in particular has been down here in Melbourne. I've seen her at Wattle Park quite frequently over the last month. Um, whether or not she went to Falls, I don't know. But the majority of the group up there have been, have been training well from all reports. They do train together um, and they're certainly looking to, to come down here and, and work well together uh, and put a good performance on the board. And as we say that, we've just lost one of our, our pacemakers. I believe that's Melissa Duncan that's, that's stepped aside. Her job is done for the evening and it leaves Jen Gregson, the sole pacemaker that is leading and heading that second group, which in itself is starting to fracture slightly. Buscombe, Diver and Pashley are there with Gregson and we've just lost Paige Campbell of New South Wales uh, off the back along with Emily Brickacek. Yeah, those four, well, those four girls are looking really good. Jen's actually looking really good at the front doing her pacing duties, just dragging that group along. Uh, but Sinead's tucked in nice and, and, uh, and easily there in third place in that group. Uh, Pashley looks good just sitting on the back, but that injection of pace, I think when Melissa dropped out, Jen took over the lead, just caused a little bit of a fracture in that group, but they'll come back together um, over the next four laps or so, over the next couple of laps or so. Um, still got 14 laps of running to go. I remember when I was running 10K, you try not to look up until you get into single figures. Uh, it is certainly a long way as Nia makes her way through with 14 laps to go. Uh, and, the, and the K splits are very even, 75, 75, sorry, the 400 lap split, 75, 75, 75 from Nia from Japan out in front. So she's keeping a nice smooth rhythm. And that gap, yeah, it's probably opening a little bit. It's maybe 50, 60 metres now. Uh, but Jen's doing a great job keeping that second group uh, in contention should Nia start to come apart in the last couple of K, which does happen over 10 kilometres. Well, there's a long way to go, but operating like a metronome at the moment is Nia peeling off those consecutive 75 second laps. And, but now when you're out in front, particularly in such a long race, you do have to start contending with uh, those that are getting lapped, the lap runners as you move through, and you hope that they move aside. But do they become targets for you as someone to work off and to work through? Because you've been spending a lot of time out in front by yourself, and now you start to come back in contact again. Yeah, you do. I mean, it, it's always looking for the positives when you're out there. And, and, and when you've been out there for a while, 
it's, uh, it's certainly nice to start passing people and moving or feel like you're moving forward even though you're lapping but it's always nice to lap people in races as well. It gives you that confidence to keep going and sometimes I think the confusion can happen when the athletes on, uh, that are being lapped do move out. So what we do or what they're told in the call room before they get on the track is to just stay in lane one um, and just keep a constant line so that there's never any confusion. So 13 laps to go as Nia moves through. Uh, Tamsin is down trackside and has a special guest. Well, it's a little bit strange to be standing here talking to Eloise Wellings, a superstar of Australian distance racing. Eloise, why aren't you out there tonight? <laughs> um, I'm just having a little break. It's been really nice, actually. It's been my um, first break in about five years. And I mean, I'm still running quite a bit, but I'm just not running hard and I'm enjoying it. But I actually really, really miss uh, racing and competing. So don't worry, I'm not retired. I'll be back and um, yeah, really keen. Well, that's refreshing to hear because we don't want you to retire yet. There's an Olympics coming up. You're going to try for that third Olympics? Yeah, for sure. Tokyo is always a goal. And um, yeah, I mean, tonight, obviously, they're, they're having a crack at the Olympic qualifying time. So it's exciting to watch the girls have a real crack. And um, yeah, I'll, to make a third Olympics would be amazing. And you're here for a special event tomorrow morning. Tell us about that. Yeah, tomorrow morning we're getting some of the um, younger uh, distance running, I guess, endurance girls um, here at Albert Park. Um, just to chat about things that uh, we as female athletes struggle with and we might come under pressures um, with and the different culture, I guess, in athletics. And I guess um, I want to try and give back to some of those girls and I guess... Um, share lessons that I've learned throughout my career and I'm doing that with um, Jess Trengrove and Jess Rothwell and Lyndon Hall as well. They're going to be talking about the nutritional side of endurance running. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of young distance athletes, female athletes here that would love to get along to that tomorrow morning. So head along because Eloise has got a wealth of knowledge to hand off to a lot of athletes. Now, Nick, tell us what you're up to out there on the infield. Well, you know what? We're, we're, thanks, Tams. And we're talking about nutritional knowledge right down here. This is my favourite Instagram follower. It's Blake Lucas, the man who eats more hamburgers than anyone else I know. Blake, you've cleared five metres. You've got a 10-centimetre lead. Right now on the runway, it's Matt Hosey going for a new Tasmanian record at five metres. How exciting is this Steve Hooker Challenge competition? Uh, it's really good. Uh, it's really good. Uh, my partner, Flick, jumped a PB, 3.30. Uh, so I hope I can hold up my end and maybe jump a little higher if Matt clears this. Can we break that Steve Hooker challenge record tonight? That means you've got to go wait 5 minutes 15, I believe, to break the record. Can we go that tonight? Uh, if the officials let us pick the next height, then yeah. And more importantly, where's your favourite burger in Melbourne? Um, I don't eat burgers anymore. I'm now a vegetarian. I'm not. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, probably Rude Boy Burgers in Brunswick. Thank you, Blake. Back to the... 25, meet, 25 lap, 10,000 metres, 11 laps to go, Tom Thank and Tamsin. It's actually Craig up here, but while you guys have been talking about nutrition and hamburgers in Melbourne, the race has hotted up um, over 10k here at, uh, at Lakeside Stadium. Uh, Sinead Diver has actually taken over that second group and is pushing the pace on. She has become well aware that that 31.50A qualifier time for Doha next year um, is on. It is on tonight, ladies and gentlemen. She's on 31.50 pace. She's picked it up. Um, and she is closing in on Nia. I know both of them are probably running that 74, 75 second a lap pace at the moment, um, but Sinead Diver has certainly injected some pace into that second group and has split it. So there is now some big gaps starting to happen in that second group. Well, we talk about that 31.50 time in the context of this Zatapak race and the women's race in particular. Only five athletes have actually gone around that mark in this race itself. So an indication of class and quality and what we're seeing here tonight this field is pushing a pace that is right up there with, with some of the best uh, 25 lap racing we've seen in this women's 10,000 metres. And at the front of the field, Nia, we talked about, and looking at the, the world listings at this stage, seven of compatriots we talked about earlier went under that time at uh, the Yamaguchi 10 kilometre uh, in last week over in Japan. So the standard has really been set by her compatriots. So she's not only racing for a time for herself, but she needs to make sure she's in the top two or three within her country to make sure she gets that world championship berth. And Craig, there's not a lot of 10,000 metre track races these days. So you've got to make the opportunity to do a time when you get it. Yeah, absolutely. And we're very lucky to have this Zatapec meet here in Australia every year in December. It falls at an interesting time when a lot of athletes are, are maybe making their way back into their, into their sort of prep phase. Um, obviously, Australian summer is the opposite to the European summer. So many of our athletes have been competing over the last three or four months in Europe. 
um, have may have just had a break and they're re-entering back into their training um, and then obviously heading up to Falls Creek or being at Falls Creek here in, um, in Australia over our summer. So sometimes it's hit, sometimes it's miss in this 10k, but for, for now it looks like Sinead Diver is having a great run. Um, and she's making ground up on Nia from Japan, um, and it's that awkward distance at the moment for Sinead. Does she try to really push here and, and close that gap quickly as um, Nia goes through with nine laps to go? They're into that single, um, single digits that I spoke about earlier, or does she just keep settling into her rhythm at that 74, 75 second a lap pace um, and concentrate on that 31.50? My guess is she'll be just focusing on that 31.50 time the 74 second a lap pace at the moment, um, and we'll see what happens over the next couple of laps. I, Nia looks pretty strong actually as she makes her way down um, the back straight. You're not seeing it on our screens, but I'm seeing it through the window at the moment. She's looking pretty good, um, as is Sinead as she goes past the 1500 start with just under nine laps to go. Um, she'll be starting to think about trying to make up some ground on Nia, um, and if she, if she can do that, then it's going to be a really interesting race over the last couple of K. Well, a couple of lap runners not taking your advice to step out into, <laughs> into lane one, making it a little bit harder for our, our international visitor just to move through, but uh, she's moving at quite the pace now that it didn't take her too long to, to go straight past. And, and Diver is moving quite swiftly as we see Nia move her way into the home straight. Uh, Buscombe and Pashley are the next uh, competitors out there behind our top two. So they're in and amongst the medals. And of course, this is the national championship of Australia. This race does double. So uh, while Nia is leading, uh, we look to our second to fourth athletes that are filling the medals positions in the Australian 10,000 metre championships. So it's eight laps to, laps to go for Hitomi Nia of Japan. And looking very comfortable still. Doesn't seem to be easing up, but the diver's really moving on with this and, and seems to have really taken to the task of trying to hold this standard. Um, she's looking good, Sinead. She goes through with eight laps to go. Interestingly, just look, trying to look closely at her footwear, she's opted for the flats by the looks of things tonight, Sinead. So she's got um, that longevity in mind as well, knowing that she's going to have to continue her form and, and stay injury-free, which she's been very good at. Um, but the flats, whether that comes into play in the last couple of laps or not, I doubt it. I think maybe her cars will, will, uh, will be quite strong from all, her longer, from all her longer work and experience and training and Waddle Park that she uses here in Melbourne quite a bit. Um, she's in very good, good nick and, and, uh, and very strong and looking very smooth. Um, Nia still hitting that 75, 75 and a half seconds a lap like a metronome, just punching them out, which is pretty typical of the Japanese distance runners. They do that in the marathon. Um, just very smooth, very easy running, low arm carry. Um, you know, heel strikers predominantly, a lot of them, um, funnily enough, but they've got a light frame, light build, um, so they can do that, they can get away with that, but she's looking very smooth, um, and I think it's going to be a tough ask for Sinead to get up onto, onto Nia before the end of this race, but I think what's, what it's doing is it's just carrying her through, maintaining that 75, 76 second a lap pace, which she needs to hit that 31.50, and I'm going to look over at Tim Crosby to my right and see whether or not he's got... Um, Sinead's target finish time at the moment. See if I can give you an update on how she's going in relation to her A qualifier. Well, while we do that, you talked about dragging athletes through. We look at just some of the personal bests of the athletes that are in the pointy end of this field. And Ellie Pashley's one of them. Her best coming into this race was 34.39. So at the moment, where she's placed is well within the realms to be going quite a bit underneath that. And Camille Buscombe is a 31.45 runner at her best. And Tommy Nia, well, the class is evident. A fifth at a world championship, but she's a sub-31 runner uh, in her prime um, and looks to be getting back towards that after some time off. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we bring international athletes out to race in Australia. I know going back a long time now when I was running, um, it was always brilliant to have international athletes coming to race you because it made you rise, um, improve your performance. It made you rise to the occasion and, and really get you excited and motivated to compete above where you maybe thought you were, um, which is exactly what's happening here tonight. Um, having Nia come out from Japan in good nick, obviously world class. You mentioned fifth in the World Championships a few years ago in Moscow, um, 15-24 not long ago on the track, um, and is coming from a, from a country that has a huge pedigree in, in middle and long distance running. It's great to have her here and with the confidence that she showed earlier in the week in the press conference and knowing that the pace was going to be quite comfortable for her, the girls would know um, when they were standing on that start line. You asked me at the beginning, what would they be thinking on the start line? They'd be thinking, what's Nia going to do? How fast is she going to run and how long can I keep up? Um, and that's what's playing out at the moment. It has been over the last 20 or so laps and they're really into the business end now as they make their way just coming up to inside two kilometres to go. Um, still a lot can unfold, but it looks to me that Nia's nice and smooth. She's got some really good strong running in the legs, as is Sinead. Um, she's looking smooth as well. And we go back to, through to third and fourth place. Ali, uh, Ali Pashley has moved up in front of Camille Buscombe, and then uh, Paige Campbell and Emily Brickacek 
are back in, in, in fifth and sixth place and, and right amongst those national championship medals. So uh, moving very well through there and their times are, are right up there with their best. And we're going to head back down to the infield very shortly for uh, an update from Nick. We'll head down there in just a moment. But before then, we still look at Hitomi Nia making her way through. And she's looking really good, uh, Tom. She's got, as I spoke about earlier, a nice foot strike. Her arm carry hasn't changed. She's making her way around those lap runners. And she's keeping a really strong rhythm as she comes inside two kilometres to go. 25-12 on the clock. She's running around that 31-40 pace uh, as Sinead Diver makes her way uh, across the same point in the race coming up to eight kilometres. So just coming up to two kilometres left to go, five laps. Um, she's looking strong as well. Uh, she's got a nice strong smooth arm carry. She's on that 31-50, maybe a tick over now. Um, so this is a point, a really crucial point for Sinead where she needs to just keep concentrating Keep that effort, another couple of laps, and then you get to that point in the race where you think, I'm going to make it from here. At the moment, you still might have those little bits of doubt in the back of your mind. Can I sustain this for another six or seven minutes? It's, it's a long time. Um, it's, uh, it's a quarter of a race, really, that she's still got to, to undertake now. So, and this is the real business end. This is where all those miles that you do, all the 160 kilometre a weeks that you do, all the hills you do at Wattle Park, the time you spend at Falls Creek, all of that now starts to come into play. Unfortunately, you've got to wait 20 laps for that to happen, but you've got to do it, and that's why we do the long runs on a Sunday. And you've got to make the moments count, and we're going to quickly head down into the field to Nick Wall before we return back to the final stages of this 10,000 metres. Oh, look, thanks, Tom and Craig Mottram. You talk about legends of distance running. Well, right down here, we're going to do a couple of presentations for le absolute legends of pole vaulting. So right down here, we're going to start with the... Uh, it is the uh, Walt Chisholm pole vault award. We would love to have his son here then, uh, Chick Chisholm, to present. So Walt famously was the first Australian coach to coach someone over 14 foot, 15 foot, 16 foot, 17 foot, and also 18 foot, wasn't it, Chick? He did everything. So our award winners for that are Olivia Gross, our under-18 Australian All-Schools champion, and also Blake Lucas, our Box Hill star. So our winners of the Chick Chisholm Pole Vault Challenge. Tonight, though, even more importantly, you saw in front of us, we saw a Tasmanian record, though, at four metres no from Matt Hosey, but it was beaten by our absolute perfect couple. It was Felicity Juvelet of Casey Cadinia and Blake Lucas of Box Hill, your Steve Hooker champions. So ladies and gentlemen, last round of applause for your Steve Hooker Challenge champions for 2018. So the next time past the post for Hitomi Nia, it'll be three laps to go in this women's Zatapec 10,000 metre final. And we're on for a world-class time here this evening. Craig talked about a 31.40 schedule that we're on. Context for where that sits in the world this year, that will be a top 10 performance in 2018. So this is world-class running that we're seeing, Craig. And Atomi Nia has been like a metronome, has been consistent, has been out the front from the outset and is dedicated to the cause of getting that World Champs time. Yeah, absolutely. And she's actually starting to wind it up a little bit. She's more in that 31.30 pace at the moment, which then if we look back 100 metres and we see Sinead Diver, who's making her way down past the 1500 metre start at the moment, inside three laps, that puts her on about 31.50 pace, which is bang on that A qualifying time she's going to need um, for the World Championships next year. And if she can maintain this pace, she'll get to the bell in striking distance. And if she's there, still on that 74, 75 seconds a lap pace, my feeling is that she's going to dip under um, that 31.50 and get her qualifying time. And I'm just having a look at the splits uh, from 7, 8 and 9K. 31.10, 30, sorry, 3.10, 3.09, 3.10. Um, so still maintaining even pace, which in a 10K is the most important thing. And I would imagine both of these athletes, both Nia and Diver, are going to wind it up over the next two laps and they're going to bring it home. We might have a sub 31.30, which would get a top... 31.26, I'm being told in my ear at the moment, is the pace for, uh, for Nia, and 31.48 for Sinead Dive. I just made that up, but it's pretty close from my eye. Um, I reckon they're both going to get under that A standard. And you talk about 31.26, the race record here is 31.26.10. That was set in 2011, Joyce Chip Karui of Kenya, and that was an amazing race. Her and uh, Emily Kibet went head-to-head. -head. Now, Hitomi Nia's come out here and done this solo. Uh, Kip Karui and Kibet did that head-to-head -head in a battle for 25 laps. And this is a solo effort out in front. And to add further context, if she wants to make that top three in Japan, heading into the World Championships, she needs to beat 31, 28, 81. Yeah, so the race is on. She'll be aware of that. She'll be aware of that as she's got just 600 to go. So she will be starting to wind that up. She'll be well aware of that. 
Um, she's got to run under 31.28 to make the Japanese selection, and she's got to run under 31.26 to break the Zatapec record. She actually laughed at the Zatapec record a couple of days ago as well when we told her the pace and also the record. So I think she's pretty confident she's going to get there, uh, and she is winding up the pace. But so is Sinead Diver. Like, the distance has not changed. That 80, 90 metre gap that, uh, that Sinead's holding to Nia is, um, is very much the same. So I would imagine Sinead's keeping the same pace that she is. So she's winding it up as well as they both come inside. Uh, 500 to go and, and Nia will grab the bell. I'll leave it to you to call her in. But we are on, ladies and gentlemen, for a Zatapec 10 women's 10k record. So the bell has sounded for Hitomi Nia. One seconds. lap to go. We need a 69 second last lap or thereabouts for Nia to get inside that record time. 31.26 is the Zatapec record held by Jelks Kepkarui 2011, the time was set, ahead of her compatriot in Emily Cabet. And it's a Tomi Nia that we track down the back straight. Diver is well clear in second place, but our eyes are on the Japanese athlete. To make her national team needs to go sub 31.28. Now she's starting to wind up 200 metres from home here at Lakeside Stadium. This is world-class running. We're inside a top 10 global performance in 2018. As Nia burst by the crowd on the top of the turn. We'll have 100 metres to go when she straightens up for home. 31.12 is the clock as she enters the straight. 31.26 is the race record that she's seeking. Nia of Japan has been out in front from the outset, has shown the field a complete pair of heels. She'll just miss the meet record, but an amazing performance from the Japanese master that has come down here and claimed victory in the Zatapec 10. As we keep our eyes on Sinead Diver, the Australian, 31.50 is the World Championship qualifying standard. She's closing her eyes, gritting her teeth, making the long, desperate drive for the line. And she might have just missed it, Craig. That was close. There was a whisker in it. Oh, that was very close. My guess, 31.51, I think. She gave it everything. She had the big lean down the home straight. She had the grimace on the face. She was working the arms. Um, she certainly gave it everything, as we see. Uh, Jess Trengove go over there and say congratulations, but 31.51 or so, I believe, for, for Sinead. And Ali Pashley, this will be an outstanding personal best for her, comes in for third place in the Zatapec uh, and will take the second of the national title. Brickacek uh, into fourth, will take the bronze of the national title. Brickacek was part of that meet record race back in 2011. Buscombe, the former winner, comes across the line as well. But for Pashley, that'll be the best part of two minutes in a personal best. And it shows what happens, Craig, when you bring world-class athletes out here. They run a world-class time. They bring our best athletes through with them as well. Absolutely. And when you go out with intent, and Niwa actually stated that very early on after four laps, or five laps, she went to the front and just took it on. Um, and our Australian athletes certainly benefited from um, that. But the top three Australian athletes, Sinead Diver, Massive PB and the other two massive PBs, um, which, as you've already said, just shows that when we bring good quality athletes to Australia, our athletes perform and deliver. Um, and it's fantastic to see such big PBs um, as we start to gear up for our Australian Summer of Athletics here um, in this great country as they make our preparations and put that foundation in place to lead into Doha later in 2019. And I think what a great way to set the tone for not only the last three events of tonight but the summer as you touched on that from the first opportunity to post a qualifier in this season we've, we've gone right up to the wire yeah absolutely and it, it makes life a lot easier when you get the qualifying times out of the way early chasing times is never fun and it's certainly hard to do here in australia if we don't have that international competition and that's a big reason as to why we um, athletics australia and athletics victoria who primarily put this on bring the best quality athletes into these meets to try to help our athletes qualify so Sinead can walk away off the track tonight knowing that that 31.50 is certainly within range for her. Um, there'll be a lot of other things that play out between now and the selection of, of our Australian teams. Let's not go into that, but um, she can go um, into her next training block, whether she goes to Falls or whether she stays in Melbourne, I don't know, but she'll be able to know that she's got a really good result in the bag, a massive PB in the training that she's doing is certainly working um, as, that, as it is with all of the other girls. And that's a really good spot to be before Christmas, knowing that um, the body's in good nick, you're fit, you're healthy, uh, and you can be really nice and aggressive over the next couple of months over the Australian summer um, and then come up beautifully for the World Championships. And in many ways also puts a, a full stop on a fantastic year for Sinead that she ran the fourth fastest Australian marathon all time, the fastest on Australian soil in Melbourne, won the National Road Running 
title and has been really consistent on the road all throughout the year and, and gets now put it together on the track as well. Yeah, when you're fit, you're fit. I mean, it, it's um, marathon, 10K, 5K. You know, they're, they're obviously different events, but when you're fit and healthy, you, you deliver across a, a wide range of distances and events. I think we're going to head down trackside very shortly to have a chat to our, our top two competitors in this women's Zatapec 10 as we, we see the remaining athletes make their way through. The clock is just ticking over 35 minutes now, but uh, some outstanding performances as we head down to Tams Manu with our race winners. Well, this is going to be entertaining. First of all, we're speaking to ladies who've just finished a 10K, but we're going to use an interpreter for Hitomi, but we have to speak to you because that was an absolutely fantastic race. Talk us through the tactics of going out super fast. Sorry, one more, sorry. Um, talk us through the pace that you set early. Pace? Yeah. 31.30. 31.30. And how were you feeling at uh, the tempo when you knew that the ladies hadn't come with you in those early laps? This long. Bear with us, we'll get there, people. <laughs> the she, uh, I really feel comfortable at the beginning of the race, but you know, she came here to break the standard, so she went, you know, she paced up. Okay, and so the, the goal is obviously Tokyo Olympics? The goal is Tokyo Olympics. Yes. yes. Yep, it was an absolutely amazing run. Can you please pass on to Hitomi how impressive it was and the crowd here absolutely loved watching you attack that race and we can't wait to watch you run at a home Olympics. Now, Sinead, I have to talk to you. You're the winner of the Australian National Championships. We won't mention your age because I'm sure a lot of people have been mentioning it because you are a super mum and a super athlete and you're giving heart to a lot of athletes um, who are heading to the twilight in their years. Talk through that race. Did it go to plan? Yeah, pretty much. Um, um, I was told to just like try and stay comfortable for the first 5k and I felt pretty good, um, like pushing it a bit, but it still felt really good. And then when Jen and Liz peeled off, it was just myself and Camille kind of, I could see we were both been hesitant about going to the start or to the front. So I just went out and then just went for it from there, really, because I know that the other girls have a much stronger kick than me in the final lap. So I knew I needed to have that that break. And when you talk about breaking the race down, when you, when you go back tonight and you think about it, the time that you finished with, are you happy with that time? Are you going to look back and be wrapped with it because it is a personal best or are you going to be questioning those times in the race where you po probably could have gone a little bit earlier because you are in such great shape? Um, yeah, no, I think I'm going to be happy with it because I wasn't sure if I was going to make that time and I was a bit worried that I'd uh, blow up like at 8K and it, at 8K it felt really tough. So... I did the best I could, and I'm a bit disappointed that I missed it by a couple of seconds, but still, it's a huge PB, and I'm, yeah, I'm really happy with it. I don't think you can be disappointed with too much this year. You have run fantastic in the marathon at Melbourne. This was a great run here too, Sinead. Congratulations. Can I ask you what you'll be targeting towards the Olympics? Um, oh, definitely the marathon. Um, that's my best distance, I think. Um, I just wanted to have a crack tonight at this, because I wouldn't mind actually doing this at Doha. Um, so yeah, we're definitely a marathon for the Olympics. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your 10,000 metre champion, Sinead Diver. Well done. <laughs>